podcast. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh hello. You scared the sh out of me. How did you get into my home? Wow, it's no matter. I'm uh, just reading up on the world of shamanism while enjoying a nice warm glass of milk. The history of milk is a funny one, I'll give you that, but the historiography on the real, true history of milk is something that's been a bit lackluster over the years. The historians in charge of that should lose their homes, their jobs, and their children if they have them. Maybe move to a private island, you suck. I've been doing a little bit of research on the history of milk, and what I found I was completely horrified by. I mean, most of the history on milk is either categorically wrong, or just missing completely. That's why I think it's time that we get a little bit of a refresher on the history and the mystery of milk. Cheers. For the majority of our 150,000 year history, humans have not been able to drink milk. Children can drink milk, but at about six or seven years old, we lose the enzyme lactase, which allows us to break down the sugars in milk called lactose. That's a real fact. I'm not lying to you. If some dumb, stupid, Neolithic fool tried to get a glass of the good stuff at 12,000 BC, you'd get barfing, bloating, oh no, diarrhea. Maybe explosive, needs more research. It's generally agreed upon that dairying started about 10,000 years ago, right around the same time that we started domesticifying the animals, which is the cows and the sheep and the pigs, and making chihuahuas. If we didn't start domesticating animals 10,000 years ago, we wouldn't have critically acclaimed film Beverly Hills Chihuahua starring Hollywood sweetheart George Lopez, okay? That's a win. Okay, picture this. Basically, one Neolithic shepherd saw our baby cow nursing from his mom. And he was, he said something along the lines of, <laughs> I mean, can you blame a man for shooting his shot with the titty of a cow? I mean, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, but, oh, all right. And for a while, we only made cheese and yogurt and kefir. I don't really know how to describe what kefir is other than it, it's like danimals. It's danimals. But something happened 7,000 macaroons ago, and that was... Milk is on the freaking menu, baby. We got a gene that allowed us to drink milk, and man, the people who had that gene were surviving way better than anyone else, okay? You see, milk is a complete food, which means it has all the nutrients that we would need to survive off of it exclusively. Meaning that I could start a country where everyone would have to drink milk as the only food, and I wouldn't incur any human rights violations. That's a win in my book. Next thing you know, 80% of the Middle East and Europe have this gene, which explains this map here, weatherman mode, that shows the prevalence of lactose intolerant in our modern times. I mean, read it and weep, Samantha. Unfortunately for us, this is where all of the accurate information on the history of milk ends, meaning that I need to fill in the blanks. Now the way that the milk industry worked for a good while was that there was these small farms that would make milk pretty much for themselves and then sell the rest to the local town or milk dealer. I don't fucking know. The first real milk industry tycoon was none other than American colonist Shimshaw Cream Time. And okay, I know, ridiculous name, but everyone had ridiculous names back then. And don't you fucking dare Google that, you listen to me. He ran a farm based in Utica, New York. And one day he discovered that one of his cows was actually the largest cow ever recorded in history. A mega cow, one might say. Its name was Charles. Now Charles was able to produce more milk than the cumulative output of every other cow on Shimshon's farm, and also every other cow in the county, which is a lot of fucking milk. It's an absurd amount of milk, actually. Um, if you'll take a look at this graph here, that's how much the average cow produces per day, and this is how much fucking Charles produces in a day. What the fuck, what is going on there? We're talking scary amounts of dairy here, okay? And I'm not rhyming with jest, I am rhyming with, with fear. With all this extra profit from milk sales, Cream Time was able to purchase all of the surrounding farms in the area to make one new dairy company under the name Cream Time's Cream Time. Bad name I know, but I don't write the history here. So, you know, don't shoot the messenger. Am I right? Let's move on. Trust me when I say Cream Time was having a good time with his new business, all right? He was sending it to the Taj Mahal. He was sending it to the, the, the princess's house. He was sending it to Phil. 
Phil's a good guy. He deserves a glass of the good stuff every now and then, all right? What can I tell you? Welcome to the wise guys. Now, at the time, about 80% of the drink market was taken up by the water industry. So obviously, the executives at the water industry businessmen in colonial America, also known as Wabica, had a bit of a problem with this. So, um, so I mean, that, that's what led to the war. One of the most influential members of Wabica was none other than Carlos Fiji. And you might recognize that last name because he's actually the founder of Fiji Water, which coincidentally was not founded in Fiji, but rather a shed in Worcester, Massachusetts, because it's shed water. Carlos was running one of the most successful water shipment businesses in all of the Northeast, leading him to being one of the richest men in colonial America. This is who Bernie was talking about, guys. Carlos essentially waged a very physical trade war against Cream Time, where he planned to destroy all of his milk farms and viciously slaughter Charles, which would essentially put Cream Time's business and the milk industry down the drain. Utilizing his massive amounts of money, Fiji hired an army of what we will be referring to now as water mercenaries, which actually were the same Hessian mercenaries that fought at the Battle of Trenton, but that's another story for another war. Upon hearing of this war waged against his creamy good time, Cream Time decided to call upon none other than the Sons of Liberty, baby. Specifically, Hercules Mulligan. Hercules Mulligan actually knew a guy that they had been considering for a war. They weren't sure if they were actually going to have to fight it, but, um, you know, his name is George Washington. Yeah, George Washington fought in the Milk War of 1775. You're welcome, all right? Okay, hear me out. Washington, with his military expertise and plethora of knowledge, hatched a plan. What was that plan? I'm about to fucking tell you. Can you not ask me questions while I'm doing a presentation? A uniform for all the soldiers to wear so they could simultaneously help Cream Time deliver milk while also being able to spring into battle whenever needed. Boom, a milkman uniform. What's up, dude? Thanks for coming. This is how they won the war. This was the uniform of the Milkman Legion. In addition, they also donned a very famous Milkman hat, which had a very wide interior, which allowed them to store more bullets to fight in, in battle because they're Milkman soldiers. It was an ammo bag. That's what it was all along. Eventually, the Milkman Legion prevailed against Carlos Fiji and his water mercenaries, and they burned his house down and they tarred and feathered him. And I think they also killed his family. The Milkman uniform became a widely respected symbol of the prevailing of small business against evil large corporations. One cannot talk about the history of milk without first touching on the event that was appropriately named the corruption of the golden cow that occurred in World War II. Essentially what was going on was the German army had been researching specific artifacts of power in order to gain themselves a footing in the war. Through their research, they discovered the ancient Egyptian tomb of the golden cow, said to contain the most powerful dairy known to man. Legend has it that if you were to drink the milk from the golden cow, you would gain the powers of God itself, which is a little OP, I'm gonna be honest, and also a cow. Why would, why would you do, who, whose plan was that? What even is the purpose of having a cow like this? One of the officers that was part of this research team, Friedrich, literally a Nazi, was obsessed with gaining this power for the German army. Let me break it down for you. Friedrich, literally a Nazi, that's his name. He goes into the tomb, dumb move. Next thing, he finds the golden cow's milk. Wow, look at that, it's the golden cow's milk. Next step, he touches it. <laughs> Hell portal. We don't like Friedrich literally a Nazi, all right? Because he kind of fucked things for a little bit, okay? There was rainstorms. There was locusts. More than normal locusts. And this wasn't just any normal hell portal. This was a class six hell portal, all right? Which means you've got big guys, little, little crunchy men, big, tall rhinos with axes and giant, swords that can speak in Latin. Hello, demons, dupe boys, crazy werewolves. You've got slugs with lasers. You've got, you've got evil Phil. You've got storks, but with no beak. And instead it's a Gatling gun. And a couple bonus ones you probably don't know. You got big lights with no off switch, little kids that have, are just a fucking nuisance and <laughs> You've got at least 15 to 20 Karens, but except, except they have knives, which doubles the danger there. And big buckets of dynamite. <laughs> it was only until a separate stealth team of milkmen were able to perform the Sacrament of Dairy on the Hell Portal in order to close it. 
This eventually placed the Milkman Legion on the front lines of World War II, fighting the Germans and eventually taking Berlin. Because of this mission, President Dwight D. Eisenhower decided to give the Medal of Honor to the squad leader of the Milkman Legion, Peyton Manning. This event was probably the most monumental thing that has happened to the milk industry in its history, of course, until 40 years later with the Robot Cow Uprising. So. The year was 1984, and famous robotics and genetics trailblazer Greg Lil Ratman was trying to develop a breed of cow that would be able to produce a similar amount of milk to that of the famous mega cow, Charles. Utilizing his unique understanding of robotics and genetics, Lil Ratman was able to develop a cyber mega cow. A breed of cyborg cow with advanced intelligence that was able to decide for itself the amount of proper nutrients in order to maximize milk production. I mean, the thing is about these kind of things is that they never go well, right? Why would you give advanced intelligence to a cow, all right? We've been taking advantage of them for 10,000 fucking years. Oh, nice one, nice one, dude. I think you can kind of see where this is going. Um, but it didn't go well. So Greg's dead. One of the cows learned to develop itself laser vision. So that was a problem, I suppose. Yeah, it was, a, it was an issue. Okay, this is where things get a little bit ridiculous, so bear with me here. What else are you going to do as a uh, vengeful robot cow in 1984, well, of course, you're going to exacerbate the tensions between Russia and the USA. The cows used their advanced intelligence to hack into Russian missile silos. You know, nuclear war would be now a possibility here, okay? Overall, an event second only to the Cuban Missile Crisis. So pretty good, pretty good for cows. I mean, cows caused quite a problem. However, thanks to the top secret agents at Cream Time Intelligence Agency, they were able to take down the cyber mega cow for good. So here we are, uh, present day, you know, um, I mean, th stuff, stuff's going well, I guess. Thanks for joining me, folks. This has been Factually True in Real History. I'm your host, Ted Nivison. See you next time. I'm in a field. I'm in a field with cows. Look at me. Look at, and you're zooming out. But there's still more cows. It's a field full of cows. The field of cows. I've never seen this many cows before in my whole life. How many cows are there? At least 10. Maybe maybe 20. Shit, there's a lot. Of... Where the hell am I? Where the hell's my car? Well, this is an issue.